All right, some more uncivilized anatomy. So uh, in order to stay uh, healthy and well and move your body and restoration, it helps to know the names of all the parts. So just another anatomy video. What we're going to do in this video is talk about the contents of uh, your skull, uh, mostly your cranium. That's going to be your, your brain, uh, your nervous system. Your nervous system has helped coordinate and control all the activities in your body. And it's made of a few different parts. It's, um, quite complex of a subject, so we're just going to hit the high points here to get familiar with uh, some basic anatomy. First thing we want to talk about is there are different ways to um, uh, divide talking about uh, your, your nervous system. One is the CNS versus PNS. The CNS will stand for central nervous system uh, versus your peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is everything that's contained inside your axial skeleton. Your axial skeleton is your uh, midline structures. It doesn't necessarily involve your ribs, but your skull and your vertebral column. So this will basically be your brain, uh, your brain stem, your cerebellum, and your spine. So those are in your axial skeleton. That's referred to as the central nervous system. That's just a structural division. The peripheral nervous system will be everything outside of uh, the central nervous system uh, once it exits your vertebral column uh, through the IVFs and become nerves and, and different structures. Basically all the nerves of your body, of your torso and appendix and some of your viscera. Right. So that's one way to think about dividing up the nervous system when you talk about it. You hear these words CNS and PNS a lot. That would be a structural or anatomic uh, division. Another way to talk about the nervous system or think about the nervous system is in a functional. The SNS, the ANS. Right? In this case, this would be more functional. This is how your nervous system works. There are two broad categories. The somatic nervous system, so somatic having to do with your body, right? versus the uh, autonomic nervous system. Since it sounds like automatic, that'll help you remember that this is the stuff that you don't have to think about. There's not necessarily uh, conscious control over here. The autonomic nervous system, you can think about that as your un- or subconscious nervous system. And your somatic nervous system as your consciousness um, or everything you're uh, aware of. So your conscious nervous system, things you're aware of. right? And this is uh, everything. Uh, everything you smell, see, touch, hear, uh, your sense of balance and equilibrium, you, uh, your imagination, your thinking, that's all just in the somatic nervous system, in your awareness. And it only accounts for about 10% of the total work that your nervous system does. Most of it, the vast majority, 90% or more, is unconscious nervous system and the automatic, uh, autonomics. <clears throat> This is probably where we get that stupid phrase that says you only use 10% of your brain. That's probably where it came from. It's not true at all. You use 100% of your brain, you don't have 90% redundancy. It's just that 90% of it is not under your direct control or even awareness. The autonomic nervous system can be subdivided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic divisions. The sympathetic is also called, and you might have heard this before, right? the fight or flight. But it really should be called the uh, freeze, flee, and then fight system. Because that's what you'll do in an emergency. Your sympathetic system is going to come online and dominate. Sympathetic tone will increase or become dominant in an emergency, uh, life-threatening. Um, something jumps out to eat you or you see... Um, eating or mating opportunities, anything that would excite you that cause you to freeze, flee, or fight. There's other Fs involved with that, but we're going to keep it PG-13, come back to those later. The parasympathetic system is going to take care of everything else and is also known as the rest and digest system. Uh, also eat and secrete and uh, feed and breed. So there's other ways to think about that. Think about your parasympathetic uh, autonomic nervous system is the one that's running the show the majority of the time. Probably about 80 to 90 percent of the time in, a, in an ideal world, health and wellness, you would be in a parasympathetic dominant state where you're making just the right amount of 
digestive enzymes and your blood flow is going just the right amount to all the different parts of your body and your tonus is just right. Um, everything's going great. Then an emergency occurs, you'll jump over uh, 10 to 20% of the time for emergencies, you'll jump over to the sympathetic dominant tone and that will uh, speed up your heart rate, increase your breathing, deaden your pain sensations, increase blood sugar and blood flow to muscles, uh, give you sensations like tunnel vision or auditory exclusion. And sometimes even like in the, the sense of a car accident or a major event, when time seems to slow down, that's a process called tachypsychia. What really happens is your sympathetic nervous system has just sped up your reaction time, your processing uh, speeds, so that things seem to slow down, but it really doesn't. So uh, just as a brief overview, the autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system make up the functional divisions, and they in, they include parts of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Um, We'll talk about those in a little bit. If we do some more in-depth neuro videos, I'll talk about preganglionic and postganglionic length of the sympathetic, parasympathetic neurons, uh, so you can tell those apart. So that's how we're going to talk about the nervous system in general to break it up. Um, now I'll do a video about the regions of the brain and then uh, neurons, glial cells, white matter, that kind of thing. Okay, stay tuned.